welcome. Please stand. Whether or not you identify as a Christian, whether or not you've darkened a church door in years, whether or not you're familiar with the Catholic Mass, whether or not you are with us here in person or watching online, I encourage you to participate in this funeral Mass as fully as possible. Use the worship aid. It's available online as well on, the same, on our website on the same page that this live stream is on. And please, sing loudly. That's what Manuel would want you to do, right? If you are comfortable doing so, make the sign of the cross with us. Say amen with gusto. And whenever I say the Lord be with you, please respond by saying and with your spirit. So let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. We come here to remember Manuel Ruiz, but we also gather to celebrate who he has now become and to pray for the family and friends he leaves behind. Manuel's victory over death began many, many decades ago on the day he was baptized. We begin this Mass by sprinkling holy water on his casket. We do this to recognize that Manuel stayed true to the baptismal promises his parents and godparents made on his behalf when he was an infant. In the waters of baptism, Manuel died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. In baptism, Manuel became a new creation and clothed himself in Christ. We now place the pall on Manuel's casket in recognition of the white garment he wore on the day of his baptism. On the day of his baptism, Manuel was entrusted to carry the light of Christ. Therefore, we have brought him close to our Paschal candle one last time. Please join us in singing On Eagle's Wings, found in the worship aid.
All the people who gathered at Manuel's baptism prayed that with the help and example of family and friends, Manuel would bring his Christian dignity unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. Today, we have the sure and certain hope that by the grace of the Holy Spirit, that prayer offered so many years ago is being fulfilled. Let us pray. O God, to whom mercy and forgiveness belong, hear our prayers on behalf of your servant Manuel, whom you have called out of this world. And because he put his hope and trust in you, command that he be carried safely home to heaven and come to enjoy your eternal reward. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. And now, together, let us listen to God's sacred word. May its wisdom console us and enlighten us. Please be seated. A reading from the first book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, the reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord.
A reading for Letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Are you, we were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord. and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel, the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. So I want to acknowledge that I am preaching both to the family here who knows much more about Manuel than I do, and I'm also preaching to people watching online who might not know him as well. So if part of it isn't for you, just hang on and we will come back to something else. On the night before he died, Jesus gathered his disciples to share a final meal with them. The Gospel of John regards this event as being essential to the salvation of the world. And its main focus is a beautiful discourse by Jesus that covers three whole chapters. We have just listened to the beginning of that discourse. It is a special moment, a sacred time set apart when the past and the future come together with the present. The Greeks understood this concept. They called regular time the counted time, chronos. But they called this sacred time, this time set apart, kairos. The Last Supper is kairos time. Jesus lives in the past, the present, and the future at that moment. 
He is trying to sum up all that he has taught his disciples in the past three years. He wants to help them understand the significance of what is happening now and in the next three days. And he is instructing them how to carry out God's mission after he is gone. As Manuel entered Seton Hospital last month with COVID-19, his family wasn't sure if he was in his final days. So they entered with him into Kairos. It was a special time to recall all that had been. It was a moment of profound connection between Manuel and those who loved him, whether or not they could be in the hospital room with him. It was a time to speculate about how we will eventually be reunited with him in some inexplicable, mysterious way. Manuel Ruiz was born in Creedmoor, Texas, all the way back in 1926. As the oldest in a large family of migrant workers, he had a tough childhood. He was born with a club foot that was fixed the country way, a fix that worked but it was a long, painful process. His twin brother died of diphtheria as a toddler. Manuel had to stop his education early to go work in the fields. As a teenager, he worked on farms as far away as Michigan. Things started to turn around when Manuel came back to Austin in his early 20s and took charge at the dessert station of a downtown restaurant called the Piccadilly. One of his co-workers asked Manuel if he could possibly take on her younger sister as an assistant. He asked, do you think she can cut a pie? She answered, if you show her how. That sister, Alice, came to work at the Piccadilly, and Manuel and Alice were immediately smitten with each other. They married the next year, in 1949. Shortly after getting married, Manuel learned from Alice's Uncle Pee Wee to be a tile setter. He was soon a contractor himself, traveling a fair amount. Yet despite that, Manuel was a very involved father in the lives of their six children. Since Alice worked the evening shift, Manuel organized trips to haunted houses, UT bonfires, and Friday nights at the drive-in with a bag of burgers. He went to all the kids' events, and he was very supportive of everything they did. Millie wanted to play the clarinet, and the family scrounged to get the money, and they listened, and Millie thought for years she was great at playing the clarinet. But she said that was just her parents showing support. I never heard you, so I cannot vouch. After a roofing accident ended his contracting career, Manuel eventually joined the maintenance team at Seton Hospital and ran a, ran a landscaping company on the side. Whenever Alice threatened the kids, wait until your dad gets home, the kids didn't consider that a threat. Alice was the disciplinarian, not Manuel. Manuel was never happy unless you were laughing at something he said. And he was always happy. The Ruiz family home was a place for gatherings and laughter. After catechism class at Dolores Church, almost every Sunday was a day for barbecues with Mexican sweetbreads. All the kids' friends hung out at the house on Glissman Road. It was a place of stability. And for the last 23 years since Alice's death, Manuel provided 100% of that stability. And this week, the kids have been surprised to learn how many of their friends had deeper connections to their dad when he served as a mentor, a confidant, a second father, or an employer as their friends needed him to be for them. Even as Manuel slowed down, he never lost his style. When he could no longer mow the lawns himself, he would hang out with the clients people that his daughters called his lady friends, drinking lemonade as he supervised the work. When he was restricted by a walker, the house on Glissman Road was still a hub of rambunctious activity, 
now accompanied by John Wayne and Clint Eastwood movies playing 24-7, unless the Cowboys or the Longhorns were playing, or his granddaughter Sammy was visiting and wanted to watch the Spurs. He didn't really understand the rules of basketball, but he was willing to watch with her. Our time here together is also Kairos. We recall the impact Manuel had on our lives. We grieve that he is no longer with us. But most of all, today, let us rejoice in what marvels await him and all of us. His victory over death has already been won. There is a phrase we use a lot in the funeral prayers of the church, the sure and certain hope. We have the sure and certain hope that Manuel was led throughout his lifetime by the Good Shepherd. We have the sure and certain hope that the Lord will now reward Manuel with the crown of righteousness. His life is not ended. It has merely changed. Although we have the sure and certain hope that Manuel will receive his just reward in heaven, let us take a moment to acknowledge that our celebration of his life is also accompanied by less joyous emotions. Emotions acknowledged by our first reading from Isaiah. We're sad. We're grieving. Why was he released from the hospital last Friday with a good prognosis, only to die at home three days later? The theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote some of the best advice to those of us who grieve. He says, there is nothing that can replace the absence of someone dear to us, and one should not even attempt to do so. One must simply hold out and endure it. At first, that sounds very hard. But at the same time, it is also a great comfort. For to the extent the emptiness truly remains unfilled, one remains connected to the other person through it. It is wrong to say that God fills the emptiness. God in no way fills it, but much more leaves it precisely unfilled and thus helps us preserve, even in pain, the authentic relationship. Furthermore, the more beautiful and full the remembrances, the more difficult the separation. But gratitude transforms the torment of memory into silent joy. One bears what was lovely in the past, not as a thorn, but as a precious gift deep within a hidden treasure of which one can always be certain. When we speak of the Last Supper, we usually speak about what Jesus does. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, he institutes the Eucharist. In John, he washes the feet of his disciples. Or we talk about what he says. But perhaps that's missing the most important point. Whatever happened at the Last Supper, the earliest Christians celebrated their faith by gathering for a meal that was somehow based on it. Why? The Last Supper isn't primarily about what Jesus did. And as the apostles demonstrate in their misunderstandings of what happens in the moment, it's not about what Jesus said, where he went, or what he showed them. It's about relationships. Jesus revealed to his disciples and to all of us that we have an intimate relationship with God. Jesus is preparing a dwelling place for us is not about Jesus securing a good spot for each of us in heaven. It is about Jesus bringing us into a more intimate relationship with the Father. How appropriate that we commemorate Manuel Ruiz with a Mass. When we gather for the Eucharist, we enter into Kairos time. 
Manuel defined himself by his relationships with others, as brother, as husband, as father, as grandfather, as great-grandfather, as employer, and as friend. Our Eucharist deepens our relationship with everyone gathered here in person and online. Our Eucharist deepens our relationship with Jesus Christ yesterday, today, and forever. And through that deepening of our relationship with Jesus Christ, we come to better know the Father. Beloved, do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God. Have faith also in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. By dying with Christ, Manuel has permanently entered Kairos, a sacred time, a time set apart. He may already be dwelling in the Father's house, but as a member of the mystical body of Christ, he will always be present to us who love him. Please stand. With hope in the resurrection of Christ and with sorrow in the loss of Manuel, let us call on God, source of all kindness and comfort. Our response to each petition will be, Lord, hear our prayer. That the light of Manuel's life be continued, we pray to the Lord. For comfort and strength for the members of Manuel's family, we pray to the Lord. Lord that Manuel's family may continue to follow his great example of caring for others, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all families caring for elderly parents, may they find peace and grace in the time they spend together, we pray to the Lord. For all people suffering from the effects of COVID-19, for those who have died, for those who mourn, for those who are sick or suffering long-term physical symptoms, for those enduring financial hardship, and for those risking their lives for the sake of others, may they be consoled, and may the Holy Spirit guide the researchers and medical personnel working to end this pandemic. We pray to the Lord. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. For all of us assembled here, in person and online, to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. O oh God, you called Manuel into life and now into eternal life. Comfort our brothers and sisters who mourn the loss of this man. Do not let them be overwhelmed by grief, but strengthen them with your love. We ask this of you through Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice, yours and mine, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Manuel, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge. He lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying may be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, and eternal dwelling is made ready for us in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <laughs> you feel comfortable. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this sacrament. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Joe our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own, including those who seek you with a sincere heart. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Manuel, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant the church peace and unity in accordance with your will. We ask this, Lord Jesus, for you live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. For the, if you don't mind, if you'd all turn around and wave to the choir loft where the camera is and everybody watching online is wishing you peace.
please sit or kneel as you feel comfortable. Manuel was somebody who always wanted everyone to feel welcome. If you are not Catholic or if you cannot receive communion for another reason, I still invite you to come forward in the communion procession and just cross your arms over your chest and I will give you a blessing instead of communion so that you can still participate in this celebration of Manuel's life and eternal life. Also, when you receive communion today, because of the pandemic, we ask you to receive on the hands with your mask on and then to step at least five, six feet away before removing your mask and consuming the host. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Lord God, your Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey. Mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Manuel may come to the eternal table of Christ. He lives and reigns forever and ever. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. If Manuel's children who are here are comfortable coming forward. Would you place your hands on the casket for the final commendation? And may the rest of us take a long moment for silent prayer. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Manuel in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Manuel in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, toward, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. You may go back to your seats. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go forward proclaiming the Gospel by loving and serving one another as Manuel would wish us continue to do. Thanks be to God.